so that happens to someone like what are their options? I'm, I'm just curious. What can they do? So most of the time I represent people who've been accused of defamation or slander or libel and I file anti-slap motions in response to get rid of the case. But every once in a while, I'd say maybe 10% of my practice is representing somebody who's been misidentified on the internet or a false statement has been made. And so, for example, in this kind of case, you could file an action not against Twitter, because Twitter's genu- generally immune from suit, but you can file a lawsuit against anybody who knowingly falsely retweets a statement that they know to be untrue. Okay. Uh, it's fascinating. So, so you kind of mentioned some of the don'ts, like, so what are the do's and don'ts? What do you, what do you advise people, uh, you know, when you get, if you get a forum like this, what do you tell people to, to do or not to do or to avoid? You know, as lawyers, we're supposed to tell our clients to take a deep breath before they pull a trigger and uh, launch a million dollar lawsuit. And so I would say anytime you're a lawyer with an upset client, let's say a business that's got a negative Yelp review, consider counseling with a client before you file a million dollar defamation lawsuit. Maybe try contacting the client to uh, the, the, the customer uh, who left the negative review to see if there's anything that will make that, that client or that customer happy, as opposed to launching a lawsuit, which the client thinks they're going to get a million dollars after all this litigation and the review taken down. And instead, what they get is a dismissal and they have to write a check for attorney's fees and the review stays up. It's a lose, lose, lose situation. So they're, they're going to be unhappy no matter what. So, yeah. Yeah. 